There's a ton of tools and software to learn as a digital creative. With only so many hours in the day, what do digital creatives need to look for to determine which tool they should spend time learning? I want to discuss a tool that I think is going to be one of the most important for creatives in the coming years. Hi, I'm Mitch. I'm a multimedia specialist and digital artist who's been involved in cryptocurrency related projects since 2013. I've also been involved in projects related to NFTs and the metaverse since 2017. I like to explore new technologies that can expand the ability to create anything that involves pushing the imagination forward and trying out new things from AI art to 3D printing. I want to try it out. This channel is an experiment with the new, an exploration of possible paths and hopefully a map or at least a quick start guide to how you can get started playing with the building blocks of tomorrow's world. Allow me to be your travel guide down the rabbit hole of converging technology and media. Welcome to the fun side of the future. Welcome to In The Middle. There's a whole suite of creative tools that can be used for digital artists and designers to create media and content for the web, also just art in general. However, there's one tool that I think is really becoming important for creatives to learn this would be a huge advantage for them and allows for just a lot of different possibilities for artists to explore. At this point, you might be able to guess which tool I'm talking about. Yeah, it's Blender. Blender, huh? Love that Blender. So I'm gonna go into depth about why Blender is such a good tool for digital creatives to learn today why it has so much staying power, and also a few tricks on how to speed up the process of learning the tool. So why Blender? So I think Blender really is future-proofed for a number of reasons. It has basically like three or four different tools in one. In fact, you could argue probably even more. So 3D design out the gate is the number one thing Blender is known for. Besides 3D, it also has a very powerful visual 2D tool set. So all the textures and all of the shading in these graphics are created through Blender as well, almost like just Photoshop, but on 3D objects. It's like Photoshop squared. Then of course you have animation. You can create storylines, you can create videos, movies, you can change all the different light settings, all the different atmospheres, backgrounds, camera angles. It's incredibly complex. It's almost like having your own studio inside a computer. So with Blender, you can create 3D objects, you can design them, you can scale them, you can create all sorts of different things, and it directly outputs to a file that can be used in 3D printing. They can create tools, create characters, create art. It's a very interesting tool to learn just for that aspect alone. You can also go down the path of creating in the metaverse. The Blender Foundation, which is dedicated to developing Blender, has already gotten a huge donation from the metaverse world Decentraland. With Blender, you can literally just take something, output it to one file, to a specific file, GLTF or GLB, upload it directly to Decentraland, and your creation works pretty much off the bat. This integration of Blender as a tool that can output to something directly into Decentraland is so powerful. Okay, the final like really cool thing about Blender is that it's open source. And what does that mean? Well, for starters, it's free. And free and free and free and free and free. Not a better damn free. It free in here for free, 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 free. Don't get under down, get under down, make it on free, 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 free and free and free. Free. It's it's free. This tool is so empowering. It allows artists to do so many different things. You integrate with so many other different technologies, and it's free. And this is the beauty of open source. So there's a a community of developers and people who use the program who work together to create the project and to continue to develop it farther. So I tried to learn this program in 2013 and I made a couple things that were kind of interesting, but learning it was slow. It was a slow process. There's so many hotkeys and options that are under different menus. But the reason for that is that it just can do so much. It can't all be up on one menu. I didn't really start to learn it until like 2019. But when I did, it opened so many different doors. It's something that if you learn, you can go in all sorts of directions with. So I'm a little attached to this blender, Robert. Yeah, well, some people meditate, some people get massages. I blend. You're really weird, you know that? 
Now it does have a steep learning curve, so I'd like to give a couple tips on how you can get a little bit more of a turbo boost in learning this program. So tip number one, keep it simple. It can be so complicated. I mean, you can jump in and try it out, but you're not gonna get very far until you start watching tutorials. Uh, I would start with simple tutorials. Don't go too far into the deep end at first. There's some basic tools you'll wanna know how to use before you start acting all fancy and trying some crazy stuff in Blender. The trick I don't think anyone, I've ever seen anyone talk about, it really jump starts and turbo boosts learning Blender. And that's having two screens. Having two screens where you can see the tutorial in one video and follow along on Blender in the other screen is an amazing advantage when learning. And if you can do that, even if it's setting up a tablet or something where you can watch the video in one screen and work in the other, it really speeds up learning. The third thing I would say is try checking out some of the third party plugins. So because this is an open source program, there's a lot of different projects that build out adjacent to Blender, but they can be integrated and become plugins for Blender. There's a whole ecosystem of tools just surrounding this one's piece of software. So some aren't free, but some are, like MakeHuman, where you can actually have public domain graphics of human renders that you can plug into Blender and then incorporate into your own artwork. Here are a few clips of working inside Blender so you can get an idea of what it's like to create with this program.
most computers can run it pretty well until you get into more complicated animations or really complicated meshes. So it's not like you need a supercomputer to run this thing. Blender is like a crown jewel example of how open source can benefit society at large. So yeah, if you're a creative, highly recommend Blender. Check it out. It's an amazing tool. I hope this video has been enlightening and I can't wait to see you soon. Until next time. Hey, thanks for visiting my channel. If you can, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I really appreciate any engagement you give to this video. If you'd like to leave a comment, please let me know what you think. If you have any tips or tricks about Blender, I'd love to hear them as well. You're really weird, you know that?